Ansel Adams missed the birth of his own children. Great photographer, but maybe not a great dad. The reason he did that was he was so committed to taking the same photo of the same place over and over, over time. Because anybody who shoots outside knows that mother nature controls most of the beauty of your photo. Mother nature is constantly moving the sun and the clouds and the stars to create lame sunsets or gorgeous sunsets. So one of the secrets of real estate photography, landscape photography, wedding photography, if you include the venue, is just repeating the same shot over and over again. That's why DJI's waypoints are, I think, maybe the most revolutionary and important advancement in photography technology that I've seen in the last decade because it allows you to fly the same route over and over again. And that seems really simple, but it is so powerful. This allows you to create time lapses that occur over different times of day that can be blended together smoothly different times of the year, from summer to winter. Imagine shooting fall leaves that blend into snow, or even over years or decades potentially. And that's why I wanna tell you about it, because I want you to start working on your own drone projects. You could capture your town now, save that route, and then fly it again in a year and see new buildings that have popped up, or in 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, 100 years. Imagine the power of being able to recapture a sequence of photos or a video and then overlay it perfectly. So that's what I'm gonna teach you about today. There are other tutorials about DJI Waypoints. It's pretty easy to get started, but it's actually really difficult to get great results with it. And that's what I've been working on for the last month or so since DJI has released it. So let's go create a sequence. By the way, if you're a photographer or filmmaker who's watching this and you don't yet have a drone, get a drone. It is such a powerful tool. Imagine not being limited by standing on Earth. Ansel Adams didn't have this tool. He couldn't decide that the best composition was actually 10 feet up in the air or standing over water or 100 feet in the air. He couldn't do these things, but I know that he would have because he was kind of a nerd like us. Anyway, if you are thinking about getting a drone, uh, Adorama has a fantastic selection. They have great support and very rapid shipping. So we have affiliate links here. Check it out and we'll recommend a couple of different drones for different price points. Behind me there is the Ledge Lighthouse. This area's symbol. It's our most important landmark and I've taken hundreds of photos of it over time. And one thing I know is every photo is a little bit different. And some of the photos, not that great. Other ones, very powerful, very meaningful, and actually something I can sell for a significant amount of money. <laughs> I like that too. I'm going to record a route flying to and then flying around the lighthouse. I personally am gonna be using the DJI Fly app on the RC Pro controller. This will work the same on the DJI Fly app if you use it on your phone. DJI doesn't support all drones for this, just like the Inspire and the Mavics, the higher end drones. Goodbye furry, but hello voiceovers. If the DJI Fly app doesn't support your drone, check out Lychee. It supports all the drones listed here with similar functionality and I'm going to make waypoints out of it by first starting up the waypoint tool by clicking this icon. Then I'm simply going to take off and fly my normal route. I'm just flying totally normally. Every few seconds, I am going to tap the C1 button on the back of my controller, and that's going to record the location, the altitude, the heading, as well as the pitch of the camera, and allow me to replay that later. In theory, you could do this at home just using your controller or phone, but it's much better to do it on location so that you can get the angle and everything right. But it's not as straightforward as you might think. First, when you go to replay these waypoints, the drone never quite matches up exactly. So you're going to have to do some scaling, some moving, some zooming to get things to match up in the future. So go wider than you normally would. Be further back from your subject. Give yourself significant room to crop. You should also think about the composition going into the future. For example, the sun rises and sets in different places on the horizon, depending on where you are in the year and where you are on the earth. So if you wanna get that beautiful sunset behind it, you might plan ahead to a different season and see where that sun is going to be. If you're filming a 
time lapse of construction projects. Think about how tall that building is going to be and make sure you zoom back far enough to not just capture the entire building, but give yourself room to crop in the future. The drone will come to a full stop on the first and last waypoints that you mark. So you should not make those the beginning and end of your actual route. The beginning and end of your actual route should be the second and second to last waypoints. That gives your drone time to get up to speed from the first waypoint to the second real waypoint when you will actually start recording. You can go in after you capture it and edit each waypoint. This is important because on your second waypoint, you might want to start recording video. And on the second to last, you might want to stop recording video. You could also configure each waypoint to capture still photos. However, the drone does not come to a complete stop by default for each still photo. It slows down some. And during daylight, you know, your shutter speed is probably going to be one one thousandths and that's going to be fine. It's going to produce a sharp image. But as you get into lower and lower light, the camera might want to shoot at mm, one tenth of a second or even half of a second. In those situations, you will want to configure that waypoint to hover for a certain amount of time. Another reason to use hover is if you want to do something other than record standard video or take a standard still photo. You can set it up for night mode or you could set it up for panoramas or bracketing things I often do but the drone will not respect that when you play back the waypoints. So if those are things that you might want, configure waypoints to hover, and that will allow you to either configure it to night mode and manually start recording before continuing on the other waypoints, or it will allow you to manually take a bracketed photo or a panorama photo. As you're flying, remember, you can take your time. You can just completely stop. The drone does not record your speed or anything that you don't mark as a waypoint. So if you want to think about your composition a little bit, you can do that. You don't have to get it right the first time. You notice the DJI app gives you the option to use a point of interest. The point of interest allows you to mark a spot on the map that the drone will keep the camera pointed at no matter where you fly. I personally don't find this that useful because I, I find that the point of interest is often not very accurate. So sometimes it'll be pointed at the wrong thing upon later playback. Uh, but also I am a good enough pilot that I can just fly sideways and keep the subject they want centered. So I personally have never found a use for that feature. After you record your waypoints, go back and rename it something meaningful so you can find it later. Now that I've recorded the waypoints, I'm going to get the drone in the air and fly it and recapture it. Remember, you could do this at a different time, different day, whatever. To rerun my waypoints, I'm going to click the waypoints icon here. And then I need to open this up and click the little document icon. And then I'll scroll through and pick the waypoint sequence that I want. Now I'll click next and set my speed, which I've already set there. I can also configure it to return to home at the end of the flight or just hover or land and what I want it to do if I lose signal. And you can actually make it just continue the sequence. That means that it could just be flying completely autonomously. If I happen to die or leave or go to the bathroom or something, don't do that. Remember, laws still apply here. You still need to keep an eye on your drone, especially because weird things happen with the waypoints. Like, first of all, a big barge could come in and interfere with my flight. Uh, but also I had a waypoint added to one of my sequences spontaneously, seemingly, and it actually was flying three miles away to the local airport. So if I hadn't been actively monitoring this, it could have been a real problem. Once you've configured those things, I'm just going to cl cl click go here. It'll pretty much do everything else on its own. When you start your flight, the drone will fly directly to the first waypoint, even if there's something in the way. Obstacle avoidance will work, and it found these buildings and stopped. But obstacle avoidance doesn't really see tree branches or wires, so make sure you're watching the screen. Here's another tip. After you complete a sequence, you might want to rerun the exact same sequence again, or even a couple of times. The reason is the drone is not very precise. It will miss. Sometimes the camera will be pointed like 15 degrees off. The drone might be... 20, 30 feet away from where you told it to be. If you repeat the same sequence multiple times, there's a better chance that it will line up with your previous footage. Okay, you got your footage now. This is kind of the easy part. The bad news is it's really kind of challenging to edit it together, but I spent many hours figuring out good techniques to overlay these imperfect sequences and create great results. So let's go back to the studio and I'll show you how to edit. 
I'm going to edit two projects for you in Final Cut Pro. If you use Premiere Pro or something else, the concepts are the same. You just got to drag some different sliders, but it works in any non-linear video editor. The first one's going to be the simple one. It's just going to be a 360 of the ledge lighthouse that I was just filming. But instead of just being a standard 360, we're going to pivot from sunrise to sunset. So essentially we'll have two separate suns, each at 180 degrees. Cool concept. The second one's going to be more complex. That's going to be my own neighborhood here going from foggy morning, midday sun, sunset into night. And those are each going to demonstrate some separate concepts. Let's get started with the ledge lighthouse. Hey, the video clips look a little bright in the screen recording because my screen capture software can't handle the HDR display. The real output looks better than that. Here you can see all the different times I've run this same set of waypoints collecting different video at different times of day to give me lots of variation. So I'm going to use two separate clips that I've looked at previously. 246, which shows a sun rise, and 316, which shows a sunset. I'm just going to make a new project here. I'm going to stack the two clips. First thing I'll do is I'll take the top clip and set the opacity to 50%. This will let me see through to the bottom layer. So now I can sort of see the two layers overlaid. And you can see as I scrub through that the Mavic does not do a great job of lining them up. So that's not going to blend well, but we'll fix that in a second. But first thing I want to do is just decide on my in and out points. So I, I want the prettiest sky possible. So here's where the sun passes behind the lighthouse. So I will just clip off the beginning of these two here. We'll call this the beginning of the clip. And then let's let the other sun pass through to the other side. And we'll mark that as the end of the clip. Now I'll figure out my transition points. So I'm going to try to do this as evenly as possible. So I'm pressing M to mark the location where the sun first passes behind the lighthouse. And then on the second clip, the bottom layer here, I can see it passes behind the lighthouse again here. So the transition point should be just right in the middle there. So I'll mark that as the main transition point. Somewhere in here, I'll do like a cross dissolve. So I'm just going to mark this range. And that's where I absolutely need to make sure that they both overlap. So what I'm going to do is set a series of animations. Animations adjust settings such as the positioning or the scaling or the rotation of the clip. And they can change over time. And they're going to have to change over time because I can't simply move them at one point and have them stay locked together because the drone is uneven throughout its flight. So because I can see both clips here with the 50% opacity, I'm going to adjust the position sliders here, X and Y, and just get them as close as possible. It really helps to have a second monitor. I usually work with a 30 inch 4K monitor viewing this full screen using the AV out feature of Final Cut. And that lets me see with so much more clarity and precision and makes this all much easier. But because I'm recording this for you and you're probably watching on a smartphone, it's gonna be a little bit harder, but I can make this a little bit bigger I'm even going to zoom this in. We only care about lining up the main subject because we're not going to get the whole sky lined up. So here you can see I'm lining up the top part of the lighthouse here, but the bottom part is not lining up. That could be a scaling issue. So one of these is a little bit closer than the other one. So I need to just adjust the scaling. Okay, now maybe the rotation is a little bit off. That looks pretty good. If I zoom in and out here, you see a nice smooth transition, but you can see as I flip between the two clips, you can see that the drone's at a different altitude because look at how the horizon moves up and down and the perspective on the lighthouse changes a little bit. Altitude is the least precise dimension as measured from GPSs like what the Mavic uses. It can detect its position on the or surface of the earth much more accurately than it can its altitude because the satellites are so high in the sky. So there's going to always be a lot of variation in altitude and you just have to deal with it. Setting the opacity back to 50%. If I scrub through here, you can see while I get them lined up, they don't stay lined up. So I need to make multiple different adjustments throughout the period of transition only in order to make this an effective, convincing transition. So now that I have that in, I'm going to mark these as animations so that I can change them later. And now I'll scrub forward until the time when I see them start to fade away. And just before they fade away, I'm going to mark the animations again so that those positions stay locked in because those are still good. Now I'm going to scrub forward until I see the movement away in a straight line. And once it starts to curve away from a straight line, that's telling me that it's time to go back and line these two up. 
Now I'll scrub forward until it once again slips away in a straight line. You get it. A line, scrub forward, a line, scrub forward, a line. I spent about five minutes doing this. Now those two are pretty well aligned. I'm just scrubbing through to make sure I don't see anything weird within the period of transition. At the start of this transition here, I'm going to set the opacity of this first clip to 100%. And at the end of the transition, I will set it to 0%. Exactly like a cross dissolve, just with two separate layers to make it a little easier to edit. Here's a preview of the transition without the HDR screwed up screen recording. But you will notice because I had to scale and reposition it, the edges are bleeding through. So let's address that now. I'm going to combine these two clips into a single compound clip. That'll make it easier for me to edit them together. And now I'm just going to scroll to basically here and scale the entire clip up. This is why I told you to shoot a little bit wide so that you could do this in post. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and center the lighthouse here. I'm going to line up the middle of the lighthouse with this line and try to keep the center of these windows directly on this horizon line. And that will help me improve the overall look of my orbit. Just make it a little more perfect by making up for some of the uneven movements throughout the actual filming. So now as I scrub through here, I'm going to do just basically what I did before, which is scrub a little bit and then adjust the position of it so it's nice and steady. Adjust, scrub, repeat, adjust, scrub, repeat. This is the final stabilized combined footage with the transition. Nice and neat. Now let's do the more complex project. I'm going to pick the first sequence, the morning sequence, and make a new project out of this. And now I'm going to stack the second sequence on top of it. With those two stacked, if I enable and disable this upper clip, you can see they do not align at all. The camera is like a good 10 degrees off. So this is going to be a little bit of a challenge, especially because these variations occur over four different clips, but we will get through it. Again, I'm going to enable both clips and set the opacity to 50%. And then I'm going to just start shifting these around. And one thing I'm worried about here is that the timing might not be exactly right because I see that it's at a slightly different point of rotation. So I'm going to try scooting this around a little bit until the timing seems to be a little bit closer. And I'm looking at the lines of these docks as well as the line of the landmass here and just trying to get it as closely aligned as possible. So I think that's about the best I'm going to do. But you can see if I align the shoreline in the upper left here and this, they don't line up. And you can see also the horizon doesn't line up. And that's because the drones at different altitudes and garbage in, garbage out, right? But we need to do the best we can with this footage. Now what I can do is use the distortion panel here. This just sort of pulls each corner a little bit to pull things in the right direction. With the alignment as close as I can get, I'm going to use distortions to get it a little bit closer. First, I'll scale the viewer down so there's room around it. Now I'll click this button to view the distort handles. Set a keyframe by clicking this button in the upper left corner, not what I did here. Now I can visually drag each corner to line up as much of the image as possible. When I'm dragging from the bottom right, I'm trying to line up elements closest to the bottom right corner. Now repeat that process throughout the entire transition. Scrub forward, set a keyframe, drag each corner until everything is aligned, and repeat. Finally, click Done. After you complete the transition to a new layer, at the end of that transition, go ahead and mark all of your distortions and scalings. Then scrub forward to the start of the next transition, and we're going to reset all of those to zero. So you can see as I go from the transition to day to sunset, it straightens itself out. And that means that the next transition that I have to do isn't stacking distortions on top of distortions. Now I'll repeat this process, layering on each of the four day to night transitions adding many different points of distortion, as many as needed, in order to maintain the alignment throughout each of the transitions, and then do my final grading and post-processing on the final combined clip, and Bob's your uncle. I hope I've helped you, because I think Waypoints has so much potential and power for storytelling, and even history telling. If you want to learn more about the important parts of drone photography, not just like buying a drone and getting it in the air, but lighting, composition, storytelling, really making beautiful images. My book, Stunning Digital Photography, has been the number one best-selling book on photography for the last decade. More than two million readers right now. Check the reviews on Amazon, but buy it from northrip.photo. It applies to drones, smartphones, traditional cameras, whatever type of imaging you have. And also, we have books on Lightroom and Photoshop and the Art and Science video training series. So, 
for still images or video, these things are all totally relevant. Don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials. Bye.